George Kirkpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. We've got Khalid Bey in the house seeking the Democratic nomination for mayor of the city of Syracuse. Khalid, welcome to the program. So let's talk about this. There's a process, right? You are, you, you threw your name into the hat, but you've been thinking about this for a minute. This ain't, you didn't just wake up yesterday and say that you wanted to be mayor. Yeah, well, first, I appreciate you having me on, George. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of talk for a long time. Initially, it was not me thinking about it, but certainly with uh, so many assumptions, it's only natural that I would have thought about it uh, and wasn't too sure a couple, you know, even when uh, Ben first ran for office, if I was asked then if I would be a candidate and I said no. Um, but, you know, circumstances, I think, have changed quite a bit. And I think, uh, you know, the time calls for something different and, and I'm looking to be that something different. So what's the process going forward? You have other people who are interested as well as you and you have to survive the primary. So when would that be? So the designation, uh, we're, we're going through- I'm sorry, there's no primary. You have to be designated. And then <laughs> if, if, if you don't get that, then you would primary. Got it, okay. So, so then we're preparing for candidate or committee interviews now. Uh -huh. uh, they start shortly. The vote for the designation is scheduled to take place on February 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ultimately we see how things go. But, you know, I remain optimistic, you know, in this my effort to try to secure that designation. And if you are selected, do you expect that your potential challenges will fall in line? Or do you expect if you're that there might be a primary? And if you are not selected, would you primary? So first, I do think that uh, the others, because there's apparently four counting myself that is that are seeking the designation, I would think that at least uh, two of the others would seek a primary, uh, only because you know they they may they're not as involved with the party as myself and and the other uh, guy. You know, I try not to say their names, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would expect that there would be a primary. Uh, and, you know, initially there was conversations about not, uh, you know, ideally you want the party to be unified and that kind of thing. Uh, but the tides are turning quite a bit and, you know, there's a certain amount of excitement uh, that I'm witnessing around the idea of, of myself running for office. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see, you know, what the tide does, you know, which way it carries me. But uh, right now I'm just focused on the nomination process and I'm hoping to win the designation. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, so you said that there's some issues. This it's time for a change. Uh, you you obviously be running against incumbent independent mayor Ben Walsh. So what needs to be changed? What do you think? Uh, what what needs to be changed in the city from what the current leadership is? Well, you know, as of late, I think there were some policy differences that's been displayed uh, in his first term between him and the council. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly was at the forefront of a lot of those debates. Or oh, wait, you know what? We forgot to give you your proper honorific. You are also <laughs> counselor at large for the Syracuse Common Council. I went right to Khalid running for mayor. So forgive me for not even acknowledge that the brother's already an elected official. Okay, right. now go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm um, counselor at large and president pro tem of the council, and I've been in elected office for a decade now. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, and wow. So you know, one thing I always make the argument that, you know, with all due respect, I'm more experienced than my colleague on the council who's seeking the designation and the current mayor uh, as an elected official. Uh, and I have at, at least, you know, uh, six years at a minimum on both of them, seven on, on, on Council Green. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we've had some, some differences uh, in terms of policy. Uh, there are a number of things that happen or that the administration attempted to make happen that I for sure and my colleagues did not agree with. You know, one, you know, we're we are in a city uh, that for the most part, you know, has, has a struggling populace as it relates to uh, their financial condition, you know, and there was a push to raise taxes as high as 3%. You know, we settled for a 1% simply because uh, other counselors agreed with that. I didn't really sit comfortable with that idea either. Uh, but, you know, when people are not making any additional revenue, how do you add an in, in increased cost to their, their living? I don't know how you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, other thing 
was what many of us, and, and I'm sure he, you heard those debates about what was a ridiculously expensive police contract. You know, unfortunately, the council, you know, namely myself, Councilor Rudd, had the foresight uh, to see that as potentially problematic, considering that COVID came into play. Imagine if that contract came into play, our condition will be a lot worse than it is now. Mm -hmm. So what, what, why do you want to be mayor and what would be different under a Mayor Bay's administration uh, than what we're seeing under the current administration? What's going to be different? Well, well, one thing is action. You know, what we have right now under the current administration is a lot of ideas, none of which have come into fruition. Uh, you know, a lot of- For example, very, for example. Uh, like, uh, STEAM school, you know, a valid idea, but no movement. Uh, Syracuse surge, valid idea, no movement. You know, uh, and, you know, Syracuse build, good idea, no movement. Mm -hmm. you know, so you know, I, I don't understand why there's no movement. And only thing I can assume is that you know, uh, it's hard to put the plans together, you know, maybe by his team or, or whoever's working close with him. What I will say is, you know, and a lot of people will ask, well, you know, COVID did impact. Yeah, but that was two years after you've already been in office. There should have been some kind of movement, you know? And so, and as a person who's been on the council, I've written legislation, we've put things into action and it doesn't take that long. And so, you know, there seems to be a lot of indecision in this administration, that's certainly not a problem I have uh, with making a decision. That's one thing for sure. Uh, two, you know, I think you have to be aware of what our conditions are. And, and while there's been people, there's a lot of people who work in government, you know, and there's a lot of people who've been in elected office. And, you know, I always respect the executive. They have the right, you know, they have the right to their autonomy and, and their own ideas. Uh, and, you know, but sometimes those ideas don't really bear uh, the type of fruit or if, if, if any fruit at all, uh, you know, going forward in regards to what the administration will be like with me, one, you know, I've demonstrated, I have a, a very respectable catalog of work on the council. Uh, I've written probably the most legislation in recent years and everything I've written has been, you know, framework change in legislation with all due respect to anyone else, not resolutions, you know, that for the most part were ceremonial but legislation that would change rules that would impact people directly. I always made sure that my ideas were very organic, uh, dealing with my constituency, finding out what the issues were and legislating accordingly. And so, you know, that provides me in that, that effort that I've uh, been involved in, you know, provided me a, a certain level of understanding, you know, of what the issues are, uh, made recommendations to, you know, the administration and even the previous about, things that could have been done. And again, I respect the executive's autonomy, uh, and, you know, uh, but, you know, I want to, I would like an opportunity to uh, introduce and do some of the things that I've talked about with those uh, uh, mayors, uh, you know, the current and the past, uh, you know, I would like an opportunity to put those things into fruition and I have no doubts that I can. Crime, um, 31 homicides last year, um, second highest in history. What do you think, as mayor, what would you do uh, to have an impact on crime in the city? And would you keep the current police chief if you were elected? I won't make a comment on the current police chief. What I will say uh, is that, you know, one thing's for sure in regards to uh, the police and, and the current uh, level of gun violence in the city, a big part of policing, and I think the police and the chief would agree, is the uh, relationship between community and police. You know, the only thing that helps or, or that adds uh, to the assistance of cops trying to solve issues is when they have a good camaraderie with the community. And, you know, if, if you know, if, if it's seen that officers are solving uh, issues very, you know, rather quickly, certainly in comparison to how it has been because people are not really talking. You know, it, it acts, in, in my opinion, as a deterrent to crime in a lot of respects. Also, uh, you know, the, our, our approach to policing has to be a top-down approach. You know, the, you know, the mayor has to be one that gives a directive as it relates to uh, the intent of policing here. And the chief also has to do the same uh, to ensure that we're creating that type of community camaraderie so that police can be more effective in their job. Last thing I'll say in that respect, we have to find other ways to get family and or parents involved 
uh, you know, in terms of, you know, because a lot of the unfortunate incidents out here are happening among adolescents. Some of it is young adults. You know, uh, I know there's always the argument that people need jobs, which is absolutely true. Uh, but I don't know that jobs is a deterrent to crime. And so we have to, crime, in my opinion, George, has become a fad in some respects, and that makes it more dangerous. Uh, than it's a fad? Yeah, absolutely. It's become mm -hmm. a rite of passage of sorts, and it makes it a lot more dangerous than it used to be. And so, you know, if we don't get a grip on that, if we don't give people something else to value, then, I, you know, I don't think we've seen the worst of it. So we have to be very mindful of that. Um, and try to empower people to see the value of their life, to see the value of freedom, you know, um, and, and, and again, improve relationships between community and police. What would you, I'm uh, talking to Khalid Bay. Khalid is uh, seeking the Democratic nomination for mayor of the city of Syracuse. And economic development, you talked about a number of the policies of the current administration that you say have languished and not produced. So what would you, what would your economic development uh, policy look like that would improve the standing of a city where you have the highest concentrations of poverty uh, per capita of Black and Latino folk uh, in the country? I think the very first thing that you have to give consideration to, again, George, this is something I've talked about since I've been in City Hall, is we have to look at, and, and there has been discussion, to the credit of this administration, there has been discussion, but again, not an adequate amount of movement. Uh, but you have to look at where your redundancies and your leakages are. Where's your excess? You know, the idea of bringing more revenue into your house while you're spending, you know, uh, without limit, you know, is, is a, it's kind of a moot point. So it's always necessary to shore up your foundation before looking at, you know, what more spending you would do. And so when I look at, you know, our, uh, our bookkeeping, you know, it's, it's scattered around the city. You know, I think the first thing you have to give consideration to is centralizing our bookkeeping, centralizing our collections, centralizing our hiring processes. That way we are sure that we're not uh, accused of nepotism, you know, in our various departments. So, you know, centralizing uh, a host of other programs right into City Hall uh, and making them more efficient. Another thing, uh, you know, becoming a little bit more efficient with our permitting process that allows for uh, construction and contractors to move a lot faster than they are. Uh, in regards to uh, revenue generation, and, and number one in our capital improvement plan, plan since I've been on the council has been limited revenue generation. I've always argued that I think the city is perfectly capable of pulling itself up by its own bootstraps. Yeah, I but they do that by taxes, right? I mean, revenue generation is taxes. The number one way that government makes money is through working people. 80% of government revenue comes from the employed person, the remaining 20% come from our land resources. Naturally, we have a depleting tax base because you have high unemployment, 10.7% prior to COVID, that's over 15,000 mm -hmm. unemployed, able-bodied people, mm -hmm. right? As a matter of COVID, it's, it's not ridiculous to think that we may be as high as 20,000 able-bodied people unemployed. So you mm -hmm. have to get those people, uh, long-standing uh, unemployed people and certainly chronically unemployed people back to work. Mm -hmm. And while there's been valid efforts in the past, if we trades, training and the like, I see entry-level uh, work as a gateway to reducing unemployment. You know, for persons whose skills may be obsolete, uh, for persons who may not have all the time to spend in the training and who needs to feed their family right now, uh, there are things that I think we could do right here on the ground to get people back employed. We have just a couple of minutes left and I have two big, big questions for two minutes. I don't know how you're gonna do it. You have to figure it out. One, <laughs> one, obviously we had civil unrest and we had it last summer and we had it this week, right? Um, and, and now that has resulted at the time of this conversation of the president being impeached, right? Yes. So you had that piece. And then we had the civil unrest based on uh, the uh, killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, et cetera, and the protests right here in the city, including a viral moment in the common council chambers that has been viewed millions of times um, with, um, uh, um, now I just went out of my head for, but you, you understand the, the moment I'm talking about. So, so what, Yusuf, Yusuf Abdul Qadir, yes. Uh, so, so those two issues, the impeachment of Donald Trump and the, the uh, civil unrest based on a uh, police community and what the activists in the community 
uh, Black Lives Matter, et cetera, ha are asking for. I think it's called, it, ha it has another name. All these groups have come together. I took two minutes to ask the question, so I have to give you two that. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I wanted you to handle those two issues for me and where the Common Council sits on some of the demands that the community has asked for in terms of police accountability, but also your thoughts about this insurrection that's happened. I'll start with the local issue first. Uh, the Right to Know Act is an item that was brought to um, myself and Council President Hudson uh, over a year and a half ago. Uh, Council President Hudson turned it into the law department over a year and a half ago and it saw no movement. Uh, and so understandably, the community was frustrated. The people who brought it, Yusuf being one, was uh, uh, frustrated and that frustration was warranted. Uh, and, and it shouldn't, you know, I always say that people always, unfortunately, need a crisis in their life to change. We shouldn't mm -hmm. have required a crisis for right to know to get attention. Um, now, unfortunately, it did. Uh, it created the situation uh, with the discussion between specifically Yusuf Abdul Qadir and, and the mayor and others and, and the chamber that went viral. Uh, while, you know, we, you know, it's no need to be trivial over content, the bottom line is, uh, the uh, the approach, far as I'm concerned, and the dialogue from the community was right and exact. You know that there needs to be some reform uh, to ensure that the police are doing their job. Of course, we want to support the police, but the police cannot continue to be some police. Some police, let's be clear, uh, cannot continue to to be in predicaments where uh, it's costing the taxpayers more money. You know, and so uh, while George Floyd did not happen here. Um, you know, it was understandable that a lot of people were frustrated. Uh, and, you know, I always want to be clear that, you know, at any corporation, any organization, you may have some people who may not perform as well. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and you have to figure out ways to deal with that. And that, uh, you know, it doesn't escape, you know, our city hall, it doesn't escape our police department or any other department in the city. We, you know, we have to work to make it better. And so uh, we, we pass the right to know act to be short. Uh, there's certain things that I think can be done in, you know, in the coming future, in the near future, rather, that have uh, even more even more teeth. I, you know, my opinion on right to know is that it's a good start, but I think we can add some more strength uh, to some some things. And, and, yeah, and I was going to say, and right to know is obviously that means that if a, if there's some misconduct or some the the police records goes with him and it's not sealed. Uh, I'm making a long story short, but that's essentially what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, and that the people have access to it because currently they don't. They right. don't, right, right. Um, and so that that was a significant piece of that, but also some of the demands of the community. Um, are, um, are you confident with the progress, uh, Khalid? I have no time left, but I just need to get your thoughts about, are you, progress, are you co confident about the progress the city has made? The mayor committed a 17 point program, whatever it is. Um, are you confident about where the city is in terms of meeting those demands? They they've released, you know, that they've they've met those demands. Are you as confident as they are around that? No, no, I'm not. Uh, and and you know, I, one one immediate contradiction to me was the fact that there was an executive order put out, but then a stall on the right to know legislation. It's a contradiction that I think requires an explanation. Uh, and and I will say quickly in regards to D.C., the impeachment was warranted. You can't stage an insurrection. We all saw what happened on TV, no matter what the argument were for those who were in support of Trump in the House. I think it was clear if, any, if it was anybody else, you would have been walked out in handcuffs. Does uh, Catco get uh, some credit for taking, what credit do you give him for voting to impeach? Well, because he he, he did what was right, you know, uh, and, and of course, you know, he mentioned that he was a prosecutor and, and you know, I didn't read his entire letter, but I, I take from that that he was implying that he supports the rule of the law. Uh, he did that, and, and you know, he gets credit, and, and he's going to get some heat too. <laughs> so, good luck to him. Right, good luck to you, Khalid Bay. Thank you, I appreciate uh, it. Khalid Bay is seeking the Democratic nomination for mayor. Uh, the committees meet next month, and uh, we'll have you back. Uh, depending upon how it shakes out, because either you'll be saying, I want to get back on to talk about how I want to challenge, or there'll be some folks coming on here to challenge you. Either way, Community Inspiration Hour will be on top of it as uh, this unfolds. Khalid, good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate it, George. Inspiration for the nation.